Well, welcome back. Channel 3 is your back to school authority. School preparation is underway for families all over the state. Along with going back to class, kids across our state will be going back to practice as fall mm -hmm. sports begin. Some already began. Yeah. So how can you keep your kids safe from injuries on the field? Yeah, very important. Nicole Malepa and Caitlin Francis spoke with Dr. Karina Franklin, the chief of pediatric orthopedics at Yale New Haven Children's Hospital. Take a look. So what is the number one injury that you see ki in kids who are playing sports? Well, thank you for asking. It's actually quite variable. And so interestingly, girls and boys have different injury patterns, even when playing the same sport. Um, for example, ACL injuries are much more common in girls than boys really? when playing the equivalent sport. Yeah, that's interesting. That's right. Well, why is that? It's for a number of different reasons. Um, some of it has to do with physiologic factors, some hormonal factors, and actually some has to do with neuromuscular landing patterns and strength. Mm -hmm. Oh, and is that maybe necessarily because of how girls and boys grow different at different rates? Uh, to some extent, yes, and also because with the advent of puberty, um, they have different hormonal balances and mm -hmm. different shapes actually to their lower bodies. Um, wow. So what should parents be looking at, or coaches, what should they be looking out for? Well, there's actually great evidence that certain types of neuromuscular strength retraining can help prevent ACL injuries in female athletes, and so there's a great series of exercises, um, warm-ups, and strength training that girls and young women can do to really help reduce their risk of ACL injury. And what do those uh, training techniques look like? They're typically in several different parts and they're designed to be able to do at the beginning of a workout. And so they typically start with a gentle warm up, then some stretching, then more intensive things like plyometrics and strength training. And they're usually able to be done before practice, such as in, to replace a standard soccer practice warm up. And that makes sense because, you know, their bodies are still growing. So you want to make sure that you're really making sure you're easing into whatever intense workout you're getting from your sports so you don't get hurt. Absolutely. It is really important to warm up properly and then also to cool down correctly after you're done working out. Yeah, yeah the post-workout, mm -hmm. right? Cool down. That is Absolutely. so important. It is so important. And I think if you watch any athletic competition, certainly runners at the Olympics or anybody playing an intensive sport, you will see them doing a few laps around the track mm -hmm. or stretching afterwards because they know that that's what's going to let them get back onto the field again quickly. Right. You just you don't just start and then stop. There's a whole uh, warm up and then again, like you said, cool down. So um, should they start making this part of their routine at an early age? Absolutely. It's always a good idea to warm up appropriately and especially after summer when as appropriate athletes may have had a break, which is nice, but you know, now they're coming back into the intensive part of their sport and as you said, they can't just start immediately. It's a really good idea to start with lower mileage or less intensity at the very beginning of the season mm -hmm. and then also to make sure that they're stretching and warming up before they practice and again at the end. So on the couch there, what is that? So this is a foam roller. They come in a lot of different types. This is a nice aid to stretch tired mm -hmm. muscles. This is particularly useful after a workout. So you okay. can use your own body weight to lie on this and press, for example, your quads yep. or your hamstrings or any part of your legs that may be sore into this and get an effective stretch. Um, this is particularly good to stretch out a tight IT band, which is that tight band of tissue that yes. runs down the side of your leg. But I will point out it can be a little uncomfortable. To, I, to, you got to ease into the, com uh, the discomfort. Yes, right? exactly. <laughs> Lean into it. Exactly. I always say when I foam roll, it hurts so good because it kind of releases that uncomfortability so that you can eventually feel better, right? Exactly. Yeah. It is uncomfortable in the moment. A good th time to do it is if you're watching TV or something in the evenings. Mm -hmm. um, so you can use that time to foam roll and it will distract you a little bit, but also make that time a little more productive. And doctor, all of these uh, techniques that you're saying are so important both before and after. Are these online? Where can we find them? They are all over the place. And so there are many different websites that can get, uh, guide you to stretching. Um, and in particular, if coaches are interested in working on that ACL prevention program, there's something called the FIFA 11, for example, that's available online with detailed instructions on how to do it. Dr. Franklin, thanks so much. Thank you so much. And then all the information there for uh, Yale New Haven Children's Hospital, eight pediatric specialty centers, 877-YALE-MDS. That information is on your screen right there. Um, Dr. Corinna, thank you so much for all these so much great for tips. Me. Yeah, we appreciate, we appreciate it. it. Thanks for your time. Yeah, really important stuff, especially, mm -hmm. you know, some of the practices are already going on. Yeah, I know it. So you got to get ready. Yeah, absolutely.